me go there for a second. Is how, how come or what got you on one of the biggest podcasts in the world? I'm not asking for mechanics. I'm asking for what's in you. I'm authentic. I'm myself all the time. I'm 100% okay. always since I was born have been myself. And it's been something that like has like gotten me negative and positive attention. And it's something that like I'm really, really learning to absolutely love every part of and be so proud of myself. Let's go here then. A lot of people, as you, as you know, and you've, you in your own life and you've witnessed with me is I tell people, just be real, be who you are, be what you are, just be you. And we're afraid to, because we're going to get judged. Mm -hmm. And then we're afraid that if I'm, if I'm me, then people aren't going to like me. Mm -hmm. So a question here is, even though you were being authentic, were you still afraid that that's still not good enough? Yeah, I think it was that. And I was also afraid of kind of like shining too much or taking too much or being like, it felt like if I were to be my full self, it would almost be like taking from others, which I learned like is not, it's really just like inspiring others to do that too. It's not, there is no like, like one amount of light, you know, it's just yeah. like a light and it's just like how much you're willing to show. You know I mean? Okay. So let's, I'm going to, I'm going to toss this at you. Pick one entertainer one comedian that you get their career no and one well, no hang on hang on just so the audience will know okay. you're as big as them or bigger that we that we know who would that be um as big of or as bigger oh jim i really this is a stumper uh i don't think there's anyone do it that's at the exact same level in that or that has been i, I really don't know no no get, no like for joan rivers david letterman johnny carson what about what about if what level they were at when pick you're huge you're on stage in front of the whole world mm -hmm. what like what person now would be on that stage in front of the whole world that you're like that's what i'm going to create I think Joan Rivers, because she just never stopped. She didn't stop till the end. Like, okay. it just never ended. And she wasn't, she always delivered everything she delivered out of, it was always jokes. It was just, she always like came back to what her gift was and she didn't apologize. You know, obviously there's room for apology if there's, there's some like crazy misstep, but it's really, especially with what's happening now with, I don't even want to say cancel culture because I'm so over the term, but it's like, yeah. I will never be canceled. Yeah. Let's it's go here. I was going to pick first, her. But I was going to say to you, I was, when I first started your, your course, I was like very worried about getting canceled. And it was like week two, I was over it. I'm like, I don't, why am I here on this earth? If I'm going to compress myself and keep myself smaller, I'm here to like be as big as I possibly can. Okay. And For everyone say, listening, we're going to, we're going to take this apart when it comes to transformation. But the reason I ask you that, because I'm trying to contrast here, mm -hmm. where you were and how far you saw, you saw yourself going before we met and now. And that's why I ask you, give us somebody we can relate to. And I was going to pick Joan Rivers, but I'm like, I'm talking to Annie. And I don't know if I, what's going to happen if I pick that name. So, <laughs> because I don't, there's a lot of places you can go of Joan Rivers. And I'm like, but that's kind of who I thought. I mean, that woman was a powerhouse and she served till the end. You know, she would have. I saw her the night before she passed away. I saw her on, she was doing one of the red carpet roundups on Fashion Police. And I was able, I met her just like once in passing. We both had shows up on E. Hers had more than four episodes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, she, I, I, I had seen her like very pretty recently. And then I, I watched, I never really watched the show Fashion Police. I just happened to watch it the night before. And I said, she will go on for another 20 years. Like she'll just keep going. And then when she died, I was like, oh my God. But she died, I mean, still at her prime. I mean, at her absolute best, still so yeah. good. And she, she came from a darkness and that's what I kind of love. Like not a darkness, but like an honesty about your dents or like the things that you've been through, the things that make you different. And she wasn't like trying to be... I don't know, she just wasn't better than anyone. She wasn't acting better than anyone. Or she I was love being that. Right. Let's take this apart. The list you've given me so far is you used to be nervous and afraid to be in front of an audience. Now, as even I understand, <laughs> I'm sorry, even what? 
Even though I did it every single night, multiple okay. times. But now you're not. Mm -mm. Okay, tell I, people the epiphany that you had that made that shift for you. I am now here to, I go on stage, I go, it's an honor to perform for these people. I'm so grateful that I, I get to be here and that I get to exchange this energy. I'm here to make people happy, make them laugh. I'm not here to take from them or need them to tell me I'm good. Do you know let's what I mean? It's let's, like, let's encap a chorus because we talk about that in TCP. So would it be fair to say that where you come from now is part of what you're doing is not for the adulation or the self-validation, but it's the service and the expansion, which is happiness and the laughter that- 100%. And the validation, like I'm, I still work on it. Like sometimes I'm reading comments and stuff and wanting to hear the good stuff, but I really do work on the self-esteem and the loving myself. And it's, it really just doesn't matter. It's just, it's helped me so much with just like, you know, what helped me with um, negative comments was when you talked about judgment of other people. And I was like, why, why am I going to judge? I have no clue what that person that called me a fat bitch. <laughs> like. <laughs> Logged in and come like their day probably wasn't as I don't want to compare, but it probably wasn't as good as my day. Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't I didn't have any I didn't, but I'm like I don't know what's going on in their life and a lot of the times Jim too whenever I've like responded to those things or let them hurt the people are like I love you I was just kidding da, 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 da. so it's like I just choose to kind of like if I see it just really when I start to get anger over I'm like what am I getting mad about and what like why am I letting my ego be so fragile that some random person I've never met like and maybe I'm just not for them who cares and exactly so let, let me add there would you say because I agree I used to many years ago be like am I good enough are, are my programs good enough because if, what if what if people like we laugh I laugh at this now I'm like what if people compare me to the big tall guy that's been around for a lot of years and that I'm not good enough and now you've been around me for a while and we have quite a few people in the program they're like I want you over that person and I'm like, yeah. whoa, what, 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 me? Yeah. And they're like, we'll take you. And where I'm going here is when I learned to not, and this is a phrase I use a lot, stop asking how good you are and ask what the world needs. Yeah. What I'm getting on the podcast are getting to, and you, when I work from the place that let me just go do what I do, do it as well as I can, let me have fun. I stopped worrying about what people thought about me or specifically, was I good enough? Now mm -hmm. I'm asking you, did that, did you have that experience? Does it apply? Yeah, I definitely did. And I was comparing myself a lot and um, yeah, I just, it was never going to, and it, and it really was never going to be good enough. Even if I had a good set, it was like, because everything was on that external validation, it would just deplete over and over again. But if it comes from myself, it, it's not going anywhere. So, okay. And it good. just, just the, the performances are just so, it's just, it's like magic. I don't even know what's going on. It's so, it's so incredible. It's so fun to like meet people and have them like, I, I, I just, it, it's just like, okay. So I like was, I had a, like a history of sexual assault and I've talked about it a lot and I joke about it and I, and I, and I really, I'm at a place where I feel like, bring me my dog. And I feel like, um, like, I don't know how to explain it where it doesn't sound like so crazy, but I'm like glad it all happened because it's given me like this sort of like message to share. And I had these like men and women coming up to me after my sets and having listened to my podcast and stuff. And they're like, thank you so much. Like it's helping me get through like the stuff that I went through. And it's like, it's just like, I could never have asked for like a better like payment. It just feels so good to like help people just like realize that it's like totally okay. And that it's just a thing that happened. And that it's like, you know, like it made me an artist. It made me like, and who knows, maybe it didn't, but it's like, it, I'm funny as fuck. And I laugh all day and I have a, a beautiful life. And I, I just like, just like hearing people get that message from me with, and it's just, it's like priceless. It's priceless. Which shift is, you said. Not money, but also I'm making like <laughs> money, but also it's priceless. <laughs> You, you said, I hear you. You said, well, I don't know what happened. This is what happened. It's very subtle subconsciously. When you shed the fear, and I'm talking to everyone listening, mm -hmm. when you shed the fear, you started showing up differently. Mm -hmm. Now you might, it might be very subtle, 
but your inflection was different. Your energy was different. You're, you've heard me say- If you come to a show, it ain't subtle at all. I come out with like music blasting. Like, but, but hang on, hang on. No, I get, okay, I get that. But hang on. We <laughs> yeah. read people subconsciously, not even knowing we read them. And that's why we're like, they're not confident or they're afraid or they're this, mm -hmm. or I don't trust them. We read them subconsciously. When you shifted internally, you literally shifted something about yourself externally. Now, what happened is we sitting in the audience, guess what? We're seeing something different now than we saw six months ago. And we're connecting more with that person who is feeding you energy and you're feeding it back than mm -hmm. we were six months ago. Yeah. You shifted, your world shifted. And that's amazing when that happens. Yeah. Right? Because if I go out like scared, then the audience is going to be scared because I've been in an audience. If I can think back, like before I was a performer being in an audience, it's scary because you don't want the person to buy. You're like, oh God, I hope they don't buy. Yeah. Like, oh, like I, you know, once you see them nervous, you go, uh oh, like for me at least, I, they, I'm empathetic, but. <laughs> they, being a speaker, there's a phrase, I used to train platform speakers. And the phrase is, is worse to bomb it, worse than bombing yourself or worse than you bombing not bombing yourself worse than you bombing is watching someone else bomb. Yeah. I mean, that's like, you cringe. You're like, poor, you know, poor lady, poor guy, you know, I mean, let's, let's pull this out. I, I don't, I don't Yeah. Ah, this is hard. Yeah. But anyway, Transformation. So what happened when, I mean, you went from not good enough to now good enough within six months, three months, actually four months. I would say weeks, Jim. Like, I mean, it was like weeks when I started doing the subconscious reprogramming, and when I realized, and I read um, Love Your Stuff Like Your Life, Life depends, depends on it. Oh, listen to it. I like people to read to me. Um, and I wasn't grateful, Jim. I was not grateful. I was not, I, my career, if, if I were to look at it on paper, I'd be like, oh my God, I have been successful this entire time. Like there's not been a minute. I wasn't, but I was looking, I was comparing myself to other people. Why do you have that? And I don't have that. And while I was doing that, I was completely not showing gratitude for all the things that I had. So when I first, came to you or, or you came to me or we were given to each other. Sure. Um, I was living in this apartment. I did find a good boyfriend. I had found someone that is very special and I had done enough work. Like I, like I shifted enough, but it's just getting deeper and better now. And we have a dog. It's just like, I woke up this morning, Jim. I was like, I want to scream. I'm in bliss. Like I want to scream. Like before we even had the dog, I felt that way about my boyfriend. But now the dog and my boy, I'm like, oh my, I can't believe what I wake up in. It's Wait just till you listen, you know him. Wait till you listen to Manuel. I'm interrupting. Mm. Wait till you listen to Manuel. He goes, I went from my life being just, it was really bad to I want to cry that I feel so good. And Every we're, all, yeah, we're all able to do that. And for me also, that came from, I've learned over the years, I had to, because I, would, I was destructive if I didn't. I had to learn to love myself and be megatomic, truly at a deep level, grateful. Because when you're grateful, then you're grateful for the haters. You're lucky you have, have haters because you got a stage and this and that. I got time I got every day right now doing while we're promoting TCP. Trust me, I hear every day how stupid I am and what an idiot I am and all these kind of things from the haters. I just, we just click them and hide them, you know? But gratitude. Like Oprah said, gratitude is the attitude, but most of us, we hear it. And we're like, oh, that's good. Okay, next. We don't live it. And it's it's such an easy shift to like right in the morning if I wake up with like a, Ugh, I can just gratitude it away. But here's what I wanted to tell you. So when, I don't know if you know. Okay, so when I first started taking TCP, I was living in, first of all, by the way, I had in my head, no money. I was broke. I'm in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Former, I can't do it. I didn't have any ads on my podcast that I was doing. I was making like no money. I didn't want to take government money. Like it was just such a weird, like I just was like scrounging. My apartment was $1,600. My boyfriend had moved in with me. I was going to break up with him. Then the pandemic hit and I was like, stay. Thank I couldn't be more grateful for this damn pandemic. No offense. Wait, but, wait, you, wait you were going to break up with him prior yes, to the pandemic? Okay. Was, I was like, you're too young. You're this. He said to me, don't you just want someone to love you and help you with things? And I went, why would I want that? Like, I thought that was like yeah. the response. And then the pandemic hit and I was like, I don't want to like break up with this person. I love this person. And he stayed and it was just like, we just fell in love. And it was just this perfect, the pandemic was really a time for me to like break down barriers that I had put, built up about, for myself. So it was just only 
so fitting that I found you and I had been listening.